Hi, my name is John Perring. I run the Toad Hotel in Collingwood, a live music venue in Melbourne. I've been to and enjoyed many music festivals all over Australia. 15 Blues and Roots festivals, all the dark mofos, most summer mofos, most Meredith and Golden Plains festivals, and many, many more, as well as a zillion gigs. I'm also the survivor of the ill-conceived liquor licensing policy that nearly wiped out live music in Melbourne in 2010. Luckily, we won and beat these policies thanks to campaigns by Slam and Fair Go for Live Music, backed by tens of thousands of people who care about our culture and the live music art form. Now I see the same mistakes being made in New South Wales in reaction to the 1% of accidental drug overdose deaths that happen to occur at music festivals. Pretending to address drug policy and law by using liquor licensing law is the New South Wales government attempt to shift their moral and legal responsibility onto music festivals. This is unconscionable and also, more importantly, will be ineffective. It needs to be seen for what it is, nothing but a cowardly political diversional tactic. Requiring divisions of police to deploy and be paid for by the music festivals will not yield effective results, as it hasn't over decades to date in the broader Australian experience. It will financially bankrupt our music festivals or just price them out of existence, whilst not actually addressing the real issues. Community sporting events don't have to pay for over-policing and neither do politicians have to pay for their protective services. But perhaps the latter should, out of their own pockets. The reality is that drug overdose deaths occur all the time throughout Australia. A minuscule proportion happen at music festivals. The 560 a year accidental drug deaths that occur in New South Wales is a result of the accumulation of failed drug policy and ineffective police policing over decades. It's nothing to do with music festivals per se. Closing down all the music festivals in New South Wales will not stop overdoses and will not make a dent in the drug related death numbers. Governments need to rationally address drug policy and law first and base the policy on the best available evidence, expert advice and not blame and scapegoat music festivals for the government's accumulated failures. Enjoying live music is not a high risk activity, but taking untested unknown drugs is. Health professionals warned us in the media that dangerous drugs were going to circulate in the community this summer. This crisis, unfortunately, always was going to tragically happen. Governments have consistently resisted measures to address harm prevention. So the overdose deaths that occur, that continue to happen throughout the Australian community to a large degree is on their heads. I know this is a complex area of policy, but blaming and punishing music festivals who have no statutory controls or tools over illegal drugs is effectively a straw man. Festivals would love to work cooperatively with health professionals if they were allowed. Governments should untie their hands. Ultimately, government bears responsibility. There is no getting away from this. We need rational policy, not a political mirage. Destroying our musical culture will not prevent deaths from unsafe illegal drugs. So my message to all musicians and music lovers is to make your voice heard. Back the Don't Kill Live Music campaign, we will prevail. And if the government digs in, vote those useless delusional New South Wales Liberal Squares out at the next opportunity. All power to you.